What is up everyone? My name is Anthony Marchese. I am the founder and owner of Rare Cars Only. And today we'd like to reintroduce our Out of the Ordinary series where we individually highlight special cars throughout the years that have been developed that truly are rare and are truly interesting. And we try to cover all of the details and history regarding each car as we do so on our social media pages but instead of reading through our articles and constantly having to scroll and look through pictures on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever we may be, YouTube gives us the format to actually speak to our viewers and allow them to listen to the stories rather than have to read everything. And we hope that this is a way to understand and learn about our stories a little bit easier. Today, we want to discuss an extremely important car that sort of spawned in the late 80s and early 90s and that is the Vector W8. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Vector or the Vector Arrow Motive Company, this company has tons of history and loads of information that you can read about all throughout the internet. Vector is a very historic, very interesting company that has been developing cars since the early, let's say, seven, mid to late 70s. They started with the Vector original wooden buck show car, which debuted on all the different magazines and all the different headlines and really surprised people with its wedge-shaped design. This was followed quickly by the Vector W2, which sort of was a way for the company to then showcase all of their abilities and all of their skills with one platform, constantly changing things over time at different shows where it was being shown around the world, changing the color of the car, changing different things on the outside of the car just to make it look a little different everywhere it went. This was an extremely important step for Vector in actually creating a car that would run with an engine. And from there, the company really then took off and began to create some of the world's most interesting cars. And the car that we're highlighting is the car that came after the Vector W2, and that is the Vector W8. But in order to start talking about the Vector W8, it's important to first talk about how the Vector Motors Corporation came into existence. And this all began in the year 1971 when American automotive engineer and businessman Gerald Weiger created a design house known then as simply Vehicle Design Force. The company's name was later changed to Vector Arrow Motive and subsequently a number of wedge-shaped cars would begin production across multiple different variations. Hate it or love it, Vector cars are the perfect combination of late 80s and early 90s nostalgic American automotive design. And while the car was designed by chief designer Gerald Weigert, the final touches and refinements for the Vectors were handled by Vector head of engineering, David Koska. Throughout production, the W8 cars received subtle changes along the way, ensuring that no two Vector W8 cars would ever be alike. Elements such as gills, rear wing adjustments, and much more were changed and added along the way, making the first car built in the Vector W8 production lineup a lot different from the last car built in the lineup itself. Speaking of the Vector W8, this car came to life during 1989 as part of the newly minted Vector Aeromotive Corporation. It struck the scene right away. It impressed automotive enthusiasts so much so that a red W8 example made a television debut in episode 15 of the 1990s TV series known as The Flash. This was truly a special car and way ahead of its time, especially when it hit the market and people saw this thing on the street. It looked really just like nothing else had ever seen ever before, aside from maybe a few cars that the Vector W8 design took inspiration from, one of them being the Alfa Romeo Caribou concept car. And of course, there's a lot of Lamborghini lines in the Vector W8 design as a whole. Now, you may or may not know this about the Vector W8, but the Vector W8 is an extremely rare car with only 19 total fully built cars ever to be produced known to the world. It's very, very rare and hard to come by, especially with seeing one in person is definitely not something that you should plan on doing often because it's not often that you will see these cars out in public. The W8 production had a very interesting production sequence 
being so that the chassis numbers actually didn't follow each other, such as one, two, three, four, and so forth. However, the cars actually were numbered in a weird sequence and we could tell you them as followed. It's hard to follow, but we'll try to explain it as we go. The first two vectors of the 19 total produced were actually prototype cars and these were known as PP1 and PP2. After speaking to some vector employees and going over some information with some vector experts, I can certify and say that these prototype cars were really, really used and really, really tested in order to get ready for actual production of the Vector W8. What do I mean by that? These cars were taken out on the track, on the street, and really driven to their full potential in order to show places such as road and track and other important media agencies what these cars were going to be capable of come production. Now, once production came, you had a load of different chassis numbers, none of them really making much sense in terms of actual sequential production, but we'll tell you what they are. And the first vector, starting with chassis 001, was followed by two, which was then followed by car number eight, interestingly enough. This was in the year 1990, and there is actually two vector W8s that have the chassis 008 designation. We'll get into a little bit more about that after, after we go through all the cars. Following eight came number five, number 13, which is one of two number 13 cars, followed by chassis number nine, six, seven, the second chassis number eight, the second chassis number 13, chassis number three, 15, 11, 12, 17, 16, and 18. So as you can see, these cars were very, very differently numbered from normal production cars, especially today. Not very easy for someone to follow along with if they're trying to track the history of these cars or find out more information about them. But that's what we have here, and that's the believed production sequence of how the cars went. Some of the cars have very interesting colors. Not all of them are plain colors like black or silver. Chassis 12 is actually a very interesting yellow, and chassis 18 is an emerald green color. So these two cars in specific stick out to me, especially as interesting ones that really deserve some more recognition, along with cars like chassis number nine, which is a beautiful purple car, and one that probably gets the most notoriety among vector enthusiasts and automotive enthusiasts around the world. Now, as we mentioned, the Vector W8 was not the only car that Vector ever produced, and they did actually build a number of different cars. However, things get a little bit different after the W8. During the time of production of the W8, Weiger displayed two Vector prototypes at the Geneva Auto Show in 1992. These two cars are known as the WX3 and the WX3R, being a roadster variation of the WX3. These are very interesting cars. And actually, a year later in 1993, an Indonesian company known as Megatech had acquired a controlling interest in the Vector company. And after Weigert returned from the Geneva Auto Show, the Vector board actually asked him to relinquish control of the company and assume only the role of the company's designer. This is where things really started to get a little tricky in terms of vector and vector history. And this is where a lot of the crazy stories that you hear online start to begin. So essentially, Weigert was actually later fired from Vector Automotive, the company he had founded in 1971 as the vehicle design force, leaving him as an absent role in the, first, in the company that he initially founded, causing a lot of stir, especially between employees and people involved in Vector. Therefore, the car that came after all of this mess in the early 90s was the Vector M12. And the M12 was actually developed pretty much solely by Megatech. And at the time, Megatech moved Vector from its Weigert-owned headquarters in Wilmington, California, into Jacksonville, Florida, where the company would actually end up sharing space with none other than Automobili Lamborghini. As a result of this, sharing the space and building the M12, the Indonesian company Megatech used a version of the Lamborghini Diablo V12 engine in the M12 cars. And as a result, some of the work on the Vector M12 was actually handled by Lamborghini engineers 
themselves. So it really is not much of a vector after reading through that and learning about that because it's more of a Lamborghini than anything else. It has a Lamborghini powertrain. It's been built by Lamborghini employees in a factory that was shared by them. So truly a lot of vector enthusiasts and a lot of automotive enthusiasts alike don't actually consider the M12 to be a vector. However, it does share the same name. It does have the same logos and it truthfully is a vector at the end of the day. So after Vector had produced just around 14 M12 cars for the world total, around the same time, another car was being built, which was known as the Vector SRV8. This is a one-off yellow car, which we have photos of shown here, and it's clearly a lot different from any of the other Vector cars ever produced. This is a very special car, being that not many people have much information about it, but you can read a full article about this car on our social media pages, at Rare Cars Only, where we tell the story of what we know about the Vector SRV8 and what makes it so interesting in the history of Vector. Now, going back to the W8, while the W8 had a six liter rod neck twin turbocharged V8 engine that produced just around 625 horsepower, it did have a claim back then in the 90s that this was a 200 mile an hour car. And however, that claim has never actually been proven to be true with a stock powertrain Vector W8. This was never a 200 mile per hour car according to Vector employees and owners. And while top speed isn't that important, it's definitely important to cover the facts and be able to tell what exactly is going on inside of these cars and their performance. Now, after the Vector SRV8, Weiger actually returned to the Vector company. Weiger took back the assets of Vector and changed the company name from Avtech Motors to Vector Supercars, finally landing on a name Vector Motors. This time around, around 2006 in the month of August at the Concorso Italiano show, Weiger showed up to the show in a V8 Avtech prototype with his friend Keith Rosenberg where he had confirmed that day that they'd actually been be beginning work on a new Vector car. This new car was planned to be announced at the 2008 LA Auto Show, and at the LA Auto Show that year, Weigert presented a prototype known as the WX8. This was a brand new looking car that was supposed to be powered by a supercharged 10 cylinder, 10 liter, all aluminum V8 engine, with a, project, a projected power output of around 1,850 horsepower, major claims, and this was a car that was set to go after cars that were setting top speed records such as the SSC Ultimate Arrow and the Bugatti Veyron at the time. Vector claimed that the WX8 was going to have a top speed of around 275 miles an hour and a zero to 60 mile an hour time in just around three seconds, and we know this not to be true because this car had never run any of those times or any of that performance, but it does exist. And it's not say, it's not certain whether this car is actually functional, whether this car can even perform anywhere near the claims or the hopes that they had it to do, but it does exist. And here it is, it's the Vector WX8. It's certainly an interesting design, regardless of how fast or how performance oriented it was. That goes for every single Vector car ever made, and I don't believe that their main focus was to chase top speed records and to be the best cars around the track. Um, Vector, however, while they weren't focused on going around the track at top speeds, Vector actually did do some racing in the M12 cars. On top of the 14 production M12 cars that were built, three of those cars were converted into racing cars known as the Vector M12, ASR race cars. These cars tended to have a lack of success due to some mechanical problems around the track. And even one of the cars was used to be converted into the Vector SRV8, which we were just talking about earlier. And that is the car that was intended to be the successor model to the M12. So the story of the Vector W8 is certainly one of the most interesting of all time. When you consider 1990 supercars, and 1980s supercars, the Vector W8 easily stands out from the crowd as one that has some of the most captivating history. And really, if you look into the full story behind the Vector Automotive Company, you can then learn all of the details about Gerald Weiger and how the company sort of came to an end. Um, we wanna pay respect to Weiger 
and the fact that he passed away recently. And we want to say that he is definitely one of the most iconic car designers, engineers, and people of all time amongst the automotive industry. And he stands out from creating one of the most interesting cars to ever grace the roads today in the Vector W8. We hope this video was a way to learn a little bit more about the Vector W8. And if you're interested in learning more about the history of this car and the history of a lot of different unique and rare cars, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Rare Cars Only to learn more about these really, really interesting machines.